Slay the Spire has devoured my free time for the last three weeks. One of my struggles with doing game reviews is that when I review a game I really enjoy, I end up spending way too much time playing the game and have hours and hours of footage to weed through. According to Steam, I've played the game for 165 hours already. I initially fell in love with the game a couple years ago, when a coworker got it for me on this Christmas Steam sale. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge gamer, and not just with video games, but with board and card games too. I come from a pretty big family and we spend countless hours playing games together. One of the games I really enjoy playing with my family is Dominion. It's a deck building game where you draw 5 cards a turn and you're trying to build a good balance in your deck between card draw, actions, money, and buys. With a good balance you can get lots of money and buys in a turn and buy points, but the points also go in your deck, making it worse. It's a very fun game to balance out and learn about deck building. Display the Spire takes the concepts of a game like Dominion and turns them into a single player dungeon crawler experience. You get the variety and fun of a dungeon crawler and also get to experience totally broken and unfair combinations in your deck, since the computer never complains about it being unfair. Unlike my wife, who hates it when I find a busted combo in Dominion. A village, a village, market, uh, alright, now I draw three cards and... One eternity later. Alright, and after that, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, gold. Okay, got lots of gold, so I think it's 16. Oh, I get two provinces. Slay the Spire is a game developed by the Seattle-based company Megacrit. It initially launched into early access in November 2017 and actually wasn't very popular. I remember watching one of my favorite Hearthstone Twitch streamers playing it around this time and not being very interested. Only interested enough to add it to my Steam wishlist, that is. So what changed? Well, actually not much. Between early access and the full release in January of 2019, the core of gameplay remained the same. The only changes to the game were some more content, like some new relics, cards, and a new playable character. I got the game for Christmas and eventually decided to give it a try. When I first started playing, I would make it to the first boss and die over and over and over again. But something was happening. I was enjoying the challenge and starting to understand the gameplay better. Slay so the Spire got me saying, just one more try, more times than any other roguelike I've ever played. I've played a lot of roguelikes, so trust me on this one. Many nights I found myself staying up way later than I should, going for a new best time or trying to climb all the way to the top of the Spire again and again. The Steam achievements for Slay the Spire are really great too. They were great challenges to go for, many of them require specific deck builds, and a great many more involve beating the game with all the characters on every difficulty. They kept me feeling motivated and challenged, and even now, after I finished every achievement, I still come back frequently to try to slay the Spire. The core gameplay of Slay the Spire is actually pretty simple. At the start of a run you pick from one of four characters. The Ironclad is like a Berserker, the Silence is all about dexterity and tactics, the Defect is about powers and buffing your character, and the Watcher I don't really like and is about not being very fun to play. Then you pick a benefit to start the game with, like a relic, some extra gold, or a rare card, and the run begins. You pick your path from a few different options, and each path has a variety of events, treasures, shops, rest sites, elites, and hallway fights. Look at the simple ones out of the way first. Events are all different, some give you gold or cards, others give you healing, and still others have hard bosses. Treasures give you some gold and some relic, shops give you a chance to buy relics, cards, and potions, and most importantly remove cards from your deck. Then there are the rest sites where you have a choice of healing up some of your HP or upgrading one of your cards. The bulk of the game is played out in hallway fights. Each turn you draw 5 cards and gain 3 energy, and the cards up cost energy to play, and generally either attack, block, or buff your character. Each fight, the goal is to get the health of the enemy to zero, and the enemies show what they intend to do each turn with symbols over their head. At the end of each turn, you discard your hand, and then the enemies take their turns acting out the intents that they showed before, and then back to your turn. At the end of each battle, you're given a choice of 3 cards, or to skip them all together. Elites play out the same way. Except they are much more deadly and when you defeat them, you also get a relic. Relics in the game are extremely powerful. There is an achievement to beat the game without any relics, and it was probably the hardest one skill-wise. The relics are great because they make combat easier for you. Sometimes they make your block more effective, or give you extra energy to use during combat. They are integrated into the game extremely well and into all aspects of the game as well into the shops, into the vents, everything I mentioned before. Usually, the relics you get early on in the run make a great guide for the type of deck you should be building, and the variety of viable decks in Slay the Spire is virtually infinite. Any card has a chance to be overpowered if you get the right set of cards and relics to support it. One of the cards the community and popular streamers complain about is Claw, a card for defect. What Claw does is it costs zero and only does three damage, but makes it so every other Claw for the rest of the game deals two more damage. So if you play a lot of them, I mean, it's actually quite good. Except it's not. It's really bad. Except for when it's not. And now it's 
time for Game Design with Dean, the part of the show where Dean talks about game design. One day, while playing Hearthstone, Dean realised he didn't really like Hearthstone anymore. I think that where Slay the Spire gets the most mileage is with the balance of the game. I have played a lot of Hearthstone in my day, and I dumped more hours into it than I'd like to admit. But I haven't played Hearthstone more than once a week for more than three months, and here's why. I'm tired of playing the same deck over and over, and playing against the same type of decks over and over. A lot of this issue stems from the fact that Hearthstone is a two-player game, and there's only so much fun to go around, so everything has to be sort of fair and balanced. But Slay the Spire? <laughs> the enemies don't give a flying fart if the game is fair for them. In designing a single-player experience, you don't need to be concerned with fairness. Your only real concern is making a gameplay loop that is compelling. Slay the Spire designers had this in mind when balancing out each of the class's cards and relics. The question they asked wasn't, is this fair, but was, this is very powerful. Is it so powerful that every run will play out this way? They chose for power to come from combining cards and relics, so even though things are sometimes super broken, getting that combination of cards isn't likely, so every run plays out differently. This design is applied really well, and is true for all of the powerful strategies. Except... This has been Game Design Minute with Dean. Tune in next time to hear Dean talk about yet another broken life. Hey, I happen to love the genre, and maybe it's on sale last week. What was I supposed to do? Slay the Spire is a beautifully crafted game that is charming, challenging, and exciting. It is a dangerous game because you'll likely find yourself losing track of time at 2 in the morning and having to go to work 4 hours later like I was. The gripping gameplay and explosive turns you spend the whole run setting up for will keep you saying just one more run all day long if you're not careful. I strongly recommend Slay the Spire to anyone who enjoys card games or roguelikes. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. You are amazing. It has been a while since our last video because I decided to wonder up the production quality, and that means that these videos take a tremendous amount of time. I filtered through more than 40 hours of gameplay for this video, and so if you like the video, it makes me feel so happy when I see people chatting in the comments and subscribing. Just like last time, another huge thank you to my sister Lisa for all the art. Make sure to follow her on Instagram, link in the description. I'll see you all next time. Bye!